Praise God. How many know that he's able? Yes. How many know that he's able? Yes. Yes. I know you gave him some glory earlier today, but can you give him some glory on me?
and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he, oh, he prevailed, not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. Uh -huh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint mm -hmm. as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go uh -huh. for the day breaketh. Uh -huh. And he said, I will not let thee go uh -huh. except thou wrestle me. Uh -huh. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. Uh -huh. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. Yes. For I am prince of the power of God and with man, and has prevailed. And Jacob asked him, and said, to, and said, tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, wherefore, is it that thou doest act after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Penia. For I have seen God face to face. And my life is preserved. Uh -huh. And as he passed over Penia, the sun rose upon him. And he halted upon his hill. Another translation says he knelt. He knelt. <laughs> Spirit of the living God, I thank you once again for this gracious opportunity. Dear God, I thank you for allowing me, dear God, to come before the hearing of your people, dear Lord. I pray that, as always, dear God, that you anoint me that I'm relevant, dear God. That you hold not back the depths and the power and the revelation of your word, dear God, for the frailty of your speaker, dear God. But, brother, remove me out the way, dear God, that you can totally have your way yes, in this place, dear God. And every spirit and every force that's trying to lurk and come against your word, dear God, I bind it right now in the name of Jesus. I cast it out of your house. Yes, yes. Oh, God, that you may have your way, dear God. Yes. That through your word and the hearing of your word, dear God, that somebody be made new, dear God. That somebody will understand, dear God, their struggle. And that you will touch them, dear God. That deliverance take place. In the name of Jesus, I pray. I declare it done in your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, thank you. As I was reading the scripture, I, I like to read by the time the Old Testament, the stories, because in the stories, I found a lot of myself. And they have so much meaning to them. And as I was reading about Jacob, you a little foundation to help you better understand. We know Jacob, him and his brother Esau, Isaac, they were Isaac's sons. The words that they, they struggled and wrestled in the womb of Rebecca. So it just didn't start when Jacob got out. He just didn't, he just didn't become a trickster, a schemer, a conner. When he came out, he was developing no habits in the womb. You know? I'm going to give you my thought in a minute. I just want to build a foundation. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, he tricked his brother. You know the story. He tricked yeah, his mm -hmm. brother into selling him his birthright yeah. for equivalent to a bowl of soup or a bowl of oatmeal. Uh -huh. And so, if that's not bad enough, his father on his dying bed, Isaac, mm -hmm. called for his eldest son, Esau, to go out to hunt and find him his favorite meal. And so Esau set out to hunt and to go find his father his favorite meal so he can come back. Mm -hmm. Jacob being a trickster con, con, con man, mama's boy, Sir Planter, all of those things, he stayed in the house. So his mother, Rebecca, heard Isaac ask Esau to go to get the meal for him to eat. She calls Jacob aside. See, that's where that spirit of deception comes from. Uh -huh. That's yes. where that tricks the spirit come from. Uh -huh. The mother. Yeah. Call him aside. Uh -huh. Give him something to eat. Knowing that his father is on his last days. Uh -huh. Vision gone. Couldn't really see which son it was. So he takes him the food. And his father eats it and, and give him the blessings. See, Jacob know that the firstborn get the inheritance of the uh -huh. father, uh -huh. which is all Canaan. 
So therefore, he gets the blessing. Esau shows up in the house and realize what has taken place. So he makes a vow, the last thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to kill you, Jacob. I'm going to hit you. Because you not only took my birthright, but you've also taken my inheritance. Yes. And so therefore, Rebecca hears that and she knows that Esau is not joking. So she tells Jacob to run and go stay with his uncle Laban. He goes and stay with his uncle Laban. And so he stays there for a while. I guess that relationship deteriorated. Then he moved on. And so he came to a place. He had his, he had his two wives and kids. And he decided to try to make amends and send them back to Canaan. To Esau to try to make peace. But Esau wasn't buying it. He sees them. He said, no, I got 400 men and we're coming for you. We coming for you. So I just wanted to build a foundation to let you know about Jacob. I'm going somewhere to wrestle with me for a moment. So my thought that God gave me in this body of scripture was we serve a God that blesses and breaks us. She must want to see. We we don't talk about that side of God that breaks us. We know this blessed God. We, we know this blessed God. But we don't want to deal with this God that breaks us. God sent me here today to do tough surgery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, I need you to do a bone marrow transplant. That's one of the toughest surgeries that you can do. Yeah. Because you have to take some out of somebody else uh -huh. and impart it in them. Yeah. So, so in essence, I'm doing an impartation. I'm going to give you what God broke in me that it may bless somebody else. Yes. You may receive it, you may reject it. But I believe somebody is going to be healed today Praise from this word. I believe it. Yes. So Jacob... Once he had sent his family on and things and he was resting. He left his uncle Laban's house. The only place he could go was back to Canaan. While he was resting, God shows up as a man. No apparent reason, no warning, no nothing. He shows up and starts a fight. How many here has encountered that God? You living the best you can, doing all you can do, uh -huh. and God that shows up in your life and sends a trouble, oh. sends some trouble your way. <laughs> and we know Him as a good God, yeah. a God who answers prayers, yeah. uh -huh. a God who heals, yeah. a God who delivers, yeah. a God that walked with us through the battle and shadow of the devil. Uh -huh. Oh, we love that God. We talk about Him. Yeah. We praise Him. But who wants to deal with a God that shows up yeah. and breaks Jesus. and starts a fight? Mm. Oh, we can ask Brother Job about that. He knows. Amen. You know? He shows up as a man. And he starts to wrestle with Jacob. And the thing is, he shows up in the darkness. So Jacob really don't know who he is. So Jacob is left with the uncertainty of what he's really fighting against. So I think often times our battles that we go through, we don't know who we're really fighting against. And oftentimes we get the enemy so much credit, but the devil's doing this, the devil's doing it. It may be the act of the devil. But let me let you know that the devil can't do anything to God allow it or ordain it. Yes, yes. yes. Unless God allow it or uh -huh. ordain it, the uh -huh. devil can't do anything. Yes. And so we spent all our time actually praising the devil. And it just made it be God that's trying to break us. Yeah. 
And so Jacob wrestled. He's wrestled. See, God doesn't always make his will crystal clear what he's trying to do in our life. You know, even the most faithful among us walks in uncertainty at times. Yes, yes. You know, because we don't always know what he's doing and why we're going through the struggle and why this is happening, why that is happening. But he knows. Yes. 